Well, it's, it's, again, it's really honoring him and, it's, and what he's capable of doing. You know, I've seen, and I still continually see individuals who, who profess to be believers, but they, you know, so often, when we hold on to something, it's hard for us to give it up. And I know that well because I learned to survive and leaving, letting go of survival, our survival mode has been the most difficult. I think I gave the story a long time ago about that ski analogy. You remember the ski analogy I gave? You know, skiing, remember that? You like that, right? I know I ski now, but... Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the ski analogy did it for me. I had to learn that principle because I've been skiing, for, like I said, for years. Big mountains. I, I, I love it. I did it. But I was a survivor. I, li I ski like I lived my life. Just surviving, just to make sure I get down without falling. That was it. That was my goal. Till I started to realize it's catching up. Because you put so much effort and work into trying to survive, and it becomes a lot of work. And as I see individuals flowing down easily, I said, I would like to ski like that. But in my mind, I'm already set. I just don't want to fall. <laughs> But I'm working really hard not to fall. And the Lord in that moment said, well, you need a lesson. Now, I've been skiing for years. Big mountains. And he said, well, I said, I turned to Lou. And you know, one of the reasons I, you know, it's just hard because Lou doesn't make things easy. Right? You guys know Lou's story? Oh, Lord. <laughs> you know? He would fall several times. But if I were to fall once, he'll forget it, you know? Don't let me have it. So I told him, Leo, oh, we need to take a lesson. Because I, coming up the festival, I was looking down these guys, coming down those slopes smooth. I said, I like that. I wanted to ski smooth like that. So I decided to take a lesson. And when the, when, the, when the instructor came and he tells me, we went off on our lesson, and he said, he goes down to the diamond and black diamond, and he goes, okay, let me see you come down. And then when Lou comes down, I come down, and he tells me, you have no technique whatsoever. <laughs> he said, I don't know how you got down, but you know. <laughs> you have no technique. <laughs> and I said, what do I have to do? Well, he gave me the, the analogy that hey, less so much love, you know. He says, hold a tray and just move your legs. You know? That's all he told me you have to do. But, regardless, when you're coming down 30, 40 miles an hour down one of those hills, it's hard to put those things together, you know? I have to go right back to what I'm comfortable with. Prayer is like that. Because to break your habitual patterns in prayer requires discipline. Now, I knew, without a doubt, when he told me that I needed to change the way, change the technique, add a technique to the way to get down, I knew, because it was new, I was going to have to fall. I didn't, didn't sit too good with me, as you know, because I know Lou was going to make fun of me. And uh, that in itself made it even more difficult. <laughs> prayer is going to be difficult. It, prayer is the one thing that if you're waiting for the Holy Spirit to give you the strength to do it, it's not going to happen. Prayer is all about discipline. You being committed to do that. But it can't be, this is not about a five minute prayer. Mm -hmm. I remember when I used to, one time I used to pray in the bathroom and used to lock myself up and pray. I didn't do, you know, long periods of time. Do that differently now. It's not a bathroom any longer, but I had the place where I would go and I know. If I don't have that consistency, I know. We have to sort of understand that it's going to require breaking some habitual patterns. But if you want to be effective, you need to pray. It's vital. Let me close on here. Romans 8.27. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Verse 26. I'm going to go backwards a little bit. As believers, we are not left to our own resources to cope with our problems. Turn to someone. You're not left to your own resources. No. You don't have it. We probably don't have the muscle. <laughs> we have to develop it. 
God works in all things, not just isolated incidents, folks, Amen. for our good. This does not mean that all that happens to us is good. Make sure they heard you. That doesn't mean that everything that happens to you is good. Turn to someone. Tell them. Evil exists in this world. Evil exists in this world. It does. But God is able to turn away, turn every circumstance around for the long-range good. And if you learn to wait on him and trust him in that area, you'll see it. It happens. That's the promise that he has for us as believers. It's time to develop this, this walk. When that man decided to, when Joshua made that agreement with, with those uh, Gibeonites, what do you think God told him? You think that because those guys were deceptive, that God would say, it will be okay for you not to keep your covenant with those people. He says, no. You're going to have to hold yourself to the covenant. How often we make mistakes and we just make another mistake because we don't want to deal with the mistake we made the first time. So we make another mistake. And God says, no. You be men and women of integrity and honor your commitments because there are lessons in them. We don't want to do that. We figure I made that mistake. Well, it was a mistake. I don't need to deal with it. So what do you hear when you hear that? Because it, it causes now, we are meant to be accountable and responsible. So don't leave one without the other. Turn to one. You're meant to be responsible and accountable. That's the question. Who are you responsible to? And who are you accountable to? I want you to think hard because here the Lord is saying, well, number one, you need to be responsible. With your relationship with the Lord, we have to be responsible. And then you are accountable to one another. So often we isolate ourselves because we don't want to be accountable to one another. That friend in that movie had to address his friend and said, yo, bro, you tell him, you know, the one that said to him, you know, I need to see the church in you. But well, prior to that, he said, you know, you may not want me to, you know, to, to hold you accountable, but he says, that's your problem. I have to account to him because we're friends, and just because, you know, it may cause some friction between the relationship doesn't mean I'm not going to do what God calls me to do. You have to account, be a, responsible for what God is calling you to do. And so often it's a hard thing to do. But when we don't have this relationship with the Lord here, we're going to crave everything else and put demands on everyone else to meet your needs. Please listen to this. When you are filled here with the Lord, then you don't need to place demands on anyone. You got that? Oh, yes. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you are doing a work in us, oh Lord. You are helping us, Lord, to be responsible in our own relationship with you. Today we've heard your words and your truth, oh Lord, as knowing what it is it meant to have a relationship with you. We live in a world that so often we may not know things may look good, but they may not be what you desire. So I pray today, Lord, for these saints here today. We pray that you would give us wisdom beyond our age. That kind of wisdom that could only come from you. We pray that today, Lord, as we prepare to close this service, that you will help us to see things in your through your eyes and not our own. And you will give us discernment. You will give us sound judgment because we're asking you for wisdom. You said to ask you for this wisdom and you give it generously. But Father, it's not an asking in a passing. It's not an asking in a five-minute devotion or devotional. 
It's about getting in that place with you and enjoying our time with you. Help us to develop these kind of muscles, Lord, as you call spiritual muscles. Help us to be men and women of integrity. Those that will trust in your leading of your Holy Spirit. I pray right now, this day, Lord, that you would empower us with eyes to see and ears to hear. Let us put all our past aside, O Lord. Let us put all our cares on your altar today, Lord. 